Akira. Akira. The dog. He's got clout. 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 I encounter self-transforming elf machine, which are creatures, entities, perhaps, although they're not made out of matter, they're made out of syntax driving light. It's one of the most challenging parts of the whole psychedelic landscape. Most people can accept the idea of disordered sensory input, recovery of traumatic memory material, but what are we to do with an L? What are we to do with an L? What, what are we to do with an L? You know, that becomes a little harder to contextualize in psychoanalytic theory, although Jung did a good job when he said, Autonomous elements can escape from the psyche's control and present themselves as independent entities. I'm not sure he's ever seen a self-transforming elf machine. It's the defining characteristic of the true DMT flash. I mean, it is not subtle. These things mob you like badly trained Rottweilers. They come bounding forward by the dozens, by the hundred. They jump into your body. They jump out of your body. I mean, it maps to some degree over the archetype of the little people, the leprechaun, the fae, and being Irish and being Jungian. I'm willing to entertain, you know, maybe I have a special relationship to this stuff. But then in the Amazon, the people using DMT that I studied, the reason they did it, they said, was to speak with the little people. Was to speak with the little people. What are we to do with an elf? What are we to do with an elf? me about my contacts with these beings it conforms to let's say the Irish model they are small full of merriment almost to a manic and frightening level it's sort of like a Bugs Bunny cartoon gone berserk they are friendly but play rough it's a land of explosions and falling anvils. The overwhelming feeling is love, this kind of crazy, childish affection. And they're delighted to have me in their presence. These entities have an agenda. It's a very curious agenda. They use a language which you see it is made out of sound but you see it and the entire point of the encounter seems to be to teach you to do this they want you to transform your language they want you to speak elfish but you know what? If you've never done DMT and you just smoked it and you're 30 seconds into this experience and it's and this is what it's come down to. What are we to do with an elf? What are we to do with an elf? What are we to do with an elf?
not a very scientific part of the rap because it's very hard to convince people that there are non-human intelligences this side of Gnebel Ganubi. And when you tell them that these non-human intelligences are accessed through the diminutive mushrooms growing on their front lawn, they just write you off as a squirrel. But this question of the non-human intelligences is very, very much on the agenda. All shamans in all times and places have claimed this. The thing that so pleases me about DMT is, you know, a lot of people will not take a psychedelic like LSD or psilocybin or something because it lasts hours and hours. Inevitably, a thing lasting that long you're going to end up dealing with your stuff, your anxiety, your fear, your this and that. A lot of people don't care for that sort of thing. With DMT, it lasts four minutes. And so how lost in an examination of childhood trauma can you get in four minutes, especially when you have hundreds of elves tugging at your coat sleeves? It's really an incredibly powerful tool. We have the UFO people claiming there are non-human intelligences, but they have no reliable method of contact that works for a skeptic. The great thing about DMT is it doesn't require belief. The truth requires no belief.
one of the reasons I've preached DMT so furiously is I just want a larger body of people to take it so that we can compare data. We need to understand how is this possible? It raises a whole host of questions. How has it been kept secret? How can millions of people go to the grave, raise children, hold jobs? The news, the doorway, standing that agape hasn't penetrated. I mean, most people believe they're imprisoned in this world. The only hope is maybe 15 years at the ashram and hideous acts of self-abnegation and control. And actually the boundary between us and an unspeakably bizarre world, it's 30 seconds away at any time as long as you have DMT. That's appalling to me. I mean, it means we don't know. We don't know. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know nothing. We don't know, we don't know, we don't know. Yeah, 
Now, people can say all kinds of things. They can say, well, this is just the autonomous substructures of the psyche manifesting themselves, but sounds to me like a lawyer's explanation. It's hard to smoke DMT, especially if you're not a smoker. It's harsh. Some people don't get enough. I would say of the people who smoke as much as I think you should smoke, 75% probably report something like this. It's hard for people to report. I've had years and years of practice. What I've just told you about this is an incredibly crumpled, compressed, edited version. Because what is really happening in there is unspeakably bizarre. Unspeakably bizarre. glossolalia-like language. Ayahuasca is a slow-release DMT. Again, at very high-dose ayahuasca and at very high-dose psilocybin, these entities begin to emerge. When I take psilocybin, sometime in the second hour, I pass through a place which I've learned to recognize. It's a feeling. Call it elf country. And there are no elves, but there's a feeling. And then I call them, you know, following the directions of a favorite episode of I Love Lucy, I call them by saying, Come in, little green men, little green men. It's simply a permitting, it's simply an invocation. And then they approach. Like a Nawari bear. Unspeakably bizarre. Unspeakably bizarre. Permit. 
spirited outrageously that roves the straight landscape, setting up in one town and then another and then another. And it's a thing of wonder and light. And carny people are loose. They're not like you and me. I remember in the little town I grew up in every 4th of July, the carnival would come to town for cherry day. We kids were told we couldn't stay out after 9 o'clock when the carnival was in town because there was just this aura. More liquor was being consumed, more people were staying up late, so forth and so on. And if you analyze the circus, it has all the elements of the DMT thing. I mean, there's the center ring, the clowns. And Henry Munn, in a wonderful essay on psilocybin mushrooms called The Mushrooms of Language, describes them as self-forming acrobatic. It's so grammar. This is clearly the same thing. place for children but it has behind that a dark side my own earliest reminiscence of what i could call erotic awareness i must have been very very young under three because i was being held by people and i was taken to a circus and there was a woman there in a tiny g-string costume spinning hanging by her teeth near the sun and it was all there Filled with all kinds of implications. 